uh, for them. And I know, Maria, certainly with the National Guard, you have, you have thousands of soldiers that you've seen. And I know, Hunter, as you were sort of thinking uh, about this legislatively, and then Amy certainly as a, as a therapist. So, uh, Maria, if you don't mind. All right, sure. Well, first of all, it is my honor to be on stage with all of you tonight, because I, I think this topic that we we all experience this evening is critical, and I'm glad that the discussion is being had and you're, you're forcing it in some sense, because it is difficult. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Um, it, it is a, a tough topic uh, to get soldiers to talk. And I, I think um, Soldier Songs in particular did a good job of portraying that difficulty in the darkness, and it made me a little uncomfortable because it, it brought back to mind some of those discussions, not just with soldiers, but with spouses that would come to me and ask for help because now their husbands were hauled up in their garage with too many alcohol bottles and a loaded weapon. So, you know, how do you work the family to understand the pain that the soldiers are going through? And so I found myself with the National Guard, we have over 11,000 men and women, and we have deployed over 10,000 since the Iraqi campaign through Afghanistan, and that didn't include Bosnia and Kosovo. So just too much experience with deployments and then the after effect of what it does, not just to the soldier, but to the family. So, and I, it, it took a very short amount of time for the military, military to figure out that we needed to intervene both up front before deployments and then afterwards, and that was the birth of the Yellow Ribbon Program that you hear so much about. And when we did it with soldiers that came back from deployment, the main, I won't say criticism, but the main feedback I would get is that, why didn't we do this before we deployed? It would have helped us so much more upfront to know we were gonna have problems communicating, that there was gonna be friction, that there were gonna be problems at home that we would feel helpless to solve. And so we changed the theory on how to do that. We, we did it up front, we did it at the end. Uh, also, soldiers that came back broken, not just mentally, but physically, that had to be taken care of. And with the National Guard, you're not active duty, so you don't come back to a base where you have that support system, and where you have your fellow comrades with you the next day and the next day. You come back to your homes out in the communities. We have 73 different armories throughout the state of Georgia. And you have to go back to your civilian job which is another total transition. So now you're coming back to rural Georgia, a spouse who doesn't really understand, children who may be proud, but still not understanding what mom or dad are going through. And then you've gotta go back to being a truck driver, or a teacher, or a doctor. And having to help our soldiers through that transition uh, was, was one of the greatest challenges that I had as a commander. And then helping employers understand what these soldiers were going through and to be patient with them, to give them time to transition. So I felt a lot of emotion as I was watching this, as I relived some of the pain, some of the growth, and also some of the happiness with the reuniting and the soldiers getting healed and getting the help that they needed and coming back and dropping down and kissing the ground at the bottom of the ramp when they got off the airplane. I mean, those are times that you just don't forget, but again, you don't talk about it either. So uh, I'll leave it at that and, and absolutely.